Project time. Uh, this is a computerized camera slider. Uh, the idea of this product is it allows a camera to be tracked along at a constant velocity, uh, which allows you to take sort of a, a sweeping motion picture. And uh, let me just insert another picture of uh, the camera I've mounted up on a sort of vertical inclination. And uh, you get a sort of sweeping video as you pan past something. And normally you sort of add this kind of like dramatic music in the background. And it's a good shot, it's a good cinematography technique. Uh, this video is just simply some of the things I learned when I built this uh, particular version of it. Um, there are many like it, uh, this is just simply mine. So one of the main concepts of this build is I wanted to uh, basically buy as much as I could from uh, off the shelf and uh, limit the fabrication. As we'll see here in a minute, that didn't quite work out. Uh, but uh, the building block is this uh, linear uh, shaft guide rod. It's uh, eight millimeters uh, in diameter, it's half a meters long. Let me pop up a typical eBay listing. Uh, I bought two pieces that it cost me uh, $10 with free shipping from uh, China. Uh, the next thing, of course, uh, the rods need to be held somehow, and that's uh, linear shaft guide supports, and these are those. Uh, that uh, set me back $12, another eBay purchase, and they seem to be very readily available. And then uh, some linear bearings. This is the ubiquitous SC8UU. Uh, it seems to be a very easily purchased bearing, and of course I have uh, a number of those. So let me just assemble this here, and then uh, talk about the next piece required. So here's the uh, finished guides, obviously pretty trivial, just uh, the shaft bearings holding up these linear bearings. Start out with some 8th inch aluminum sheet. It uh, comes from a vendor called Metal Supermarkets. Used about $4 worth of metal. A classic uh, metalworking techniques. Uh, sprayed it with some dye, uh, scribed some lines, used in a caliper to locate the exact place for the next hole. Uh, punched the holes, drilled the holes, and uh, of course end up with a, a piece of metal uh, like this. Uh, which has uh, places for four bearings, and then a mount here for a camera, and then a mount uh, here uh, for the bearing, which we'll fabricate in a second. Okay, so uh, obviously here's a uh, frame made out of this uh, open beam rail system, and the uh, linear slide now sits upon it. Uh, the next thing to do is create some system which can uh, drive it back and forth. Okay, obviously you need a motor to drive the platform. Started out with a, a NEMA 17 stepper motor, since that's a fairly easy choice to drive. You need to mount it. Uh, nice thing about the open beam system is they make mounting plates for NEMA 17 size motors, so that was good. That was $16 motor, about a $4 mounting plate. Uh, then I need to uh, basically drive the platform either through a belt or through a, a lead screw. You can have two possibilities, so the timing belts with some pulleys. Uh, or a lead screw. Now since I've never done this before, I've uh, decided to start this project with a lead screw. Uh, this is a quarter inch 20 uh, rod. It costs $10 easily purchased uh, from the hardware store. And because I'm going to use a lead screw, I'll need, now need to support on the other side. Uh, I need to have basically this um, mount here. It allows a, a bearing to be put into it and that'll be the fixture for the other side. The only thing now I'll need is a shaft coupler, uh, that's a $5 item, and uh, this basically allows the uh, rod to be attached to the shaft, and the shaft attaches to the motor. It uh, has a spring-like uh, design, so the motor doesn't stall under high torque, kind of a neat uh, gadget. Okay, next bit of fabrication. This is the motor, of course, and the shaft coupler. The lead screw that I purchased is a quarter inch 20 uh, because in North America that's what you can get in hardware stores real easily. Uh, unfortunately, a, a quarter inch thread is uh, smaller than an 8 millimeter opening. Now, if I had bought some uh, metric uh, rod, uh, I guess I would have bought that online for where I live, I would avoid this step. But since I don't have that luxury, I'm going to need to build an adapter here uh, so I can get this rod so it tightly fits into the shaft coupler. So, to build a coupler, I just have some aluminum uh, bar stock and uh, I will uh, put it to the chuck here and uh, turn it. So a classic bit of uh, metal turning here. I, I faced off the front there and then I uh, turned it down a little bit on the uh, diameter. Didn't turn it to its final dimension so I wanted to tap the hole first. Uh, of course I put a, a drill into the tailstock and uh, drilled it. Uh, yeah, that drill bit is way too long. It's, uh, it's wandering a little bit. Just I uh, didn't have the right short length drill for this one. Uh, then I of course uh, put a uh, tap into the uh, tailstock and uh, put some threads into the fitting. I turned it down its final diameter, parted it off, and of course end up with a piece that looks like this. Um, and then I glued it onto the shaft using some uh, instant uh, cement that I had hanging around. 
and uh, that made the adapter work. I needed to do both uh, on that uh, side and also on the bearing. Uh, the bearing is a classic 8mm skateboard bearing, so I fabricated two fittings there. Uh, cost was, well, zero, I guess. Okay, uh, now, of course, I got the lead screw, and I have a platform up here. I need some way to couple those together, and that's what this uh, chunk of metal is all about. Uh, it's cut out of half-inch uh, aluminum uh, plate on my table saw. I'm really quite impressed uh, how easy it is to cut to even a thick plate like this with a proper aluminum cutting blade. Um, now, aluminum isn't quite the right material. I, this should probably be made out of brass or something, because aluminum is probably too soft. But, uh, again, just what I had in my workshop when I did this little project. Um... Obviously, I need to, of course, drill a hole through here and then tap it. And then, of course, I need to have a smaller hole here to put a screw down. So here are the control electronics. Uh, the user interface is this OLED display. I got it off eBay for about $4. Uh, some switches to control it. That's about a dollar's worth of material from eBay again. A little prototyping board, another eBay purchase for a dollar. On this side here, an Arduino Nano, uh, it sent me back $2. They're amazingly cheap. This is a driver motor controller. It's a stepper controller called the Easy Driver from Sparkfun, uh, $15. Uh, coming out here is a 12 volt supply going to an old uh, AC adapter I got out of an old laptop. Um, charged at zero because it came in my junk drawer. Um, I'll zoom into the operation here in a second, but uh, this platform of course is uh, sheet metal. Uh, the nice thing about the uh, open beam system is that you can slide in an eighth inch uh, piece of metal quite easily. Uh, the reason why it's black in the background, when I did the uh, layup for it, I uh, didn't use the blue dye, I used uh, this gigantic uh, Sharpie. Uh, it's another technique of marking up metal, uh, because I needed to place some very precise standoffs to mount the uh, electronics. Let's uh, zoom into the operation of uh, how I set this thing up. So here's the program. Uh, this thing can run through five different positions uh, programmatically. Uh, it'll run to a position at a certain speed, then it'll wait uh, if desired. So I could say go left for uh, one inch, uh, do it at the slowest possible speed, uh, wait for zero seconds, I can come down, and I can even then select like a, a negative direction and to press run and off it shall run. Another mode of operation I programmed into it was a jog, so basically I can move the motor back and forth a little bit to get it in the position I desire. If you want to take a look at the code, uh, it's on my blog, I'll just throw up the uh, location of that on the screen here. Uh, and I'm sure there's a few more things I'll want to add to this as I, I keep on developing this uh, camera slider. So definitely some uh, things I'd like to change uh, now that I've actually gone through the whole program. Uh, the lead screw is a relatively slow way of driving the platform. Uh, the little Arduino there does bit bashing onto the motor driver and uh, you can't get much past a few inches uh, per second. And uh, for some videos you might want a very fast motion, so I think maybe a lead screw uh, isn't the right approach here. Uh, however, for time-lapse photography, the loose screw does seem to work extremely well. I can program this uh, rig way down in speed and have it crawl up if I'm trying to do a multi-hour exposure. Uh, anyways, uh, this has just been a build log of uh, my approach to this uh, camera slider, so perhaps of interest.